Amen. Just like Memorial Stones, amen. We're nearly at the end of our series. We've got one more after this. Kind of caps encapsulate everything, the final one. But uh, we want to go to Proverbs chapter 6 tonight. Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. Proverbs 6. Sixteen to nineteen. In two thousand and nineteen, to be uh, exact, Jan twenty ninth, uh, an American actor uh, called Jesse Smollett uh, went to a Chicago police station and reported a hate crime. He walked into the station, it was rough, it was rough, you know, ruffled and bruised upon him, and then had a noose around his neck. And he claimed that he was assaulted, attacked by some uh, 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 MAGA, which is, you know, Donald Trump's uh, supporters, Make America Great Again. They attacked him, beat him up, roughed him, put a noose around his neck. And this, 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 this report, this, 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 this sparked an outrage all the way, really, from the president downwards to the common people. Everyone's angry. They vexed. How dare they? What kind of, you know, this is, this is, you know, this is not, you know, back in, you know, back in the day, this is, this is a, you know, this is a free country, et cetera, and so forth. And this outrage is going on. But as you know, it all ended up being staged by Smollett. He had hired some men to pretend to be MAGA, which makes it quite, I'm not going to go on into it, but, um, uh, MAGA, MAGA supporters are seen as white middle class or whatever men, but these are two black men that he hired to, you know, rough him up and beat him up and put a noose around his neck. And it all, it all began to come out that this, this, this was um, uh, uh, staged by Smollett himself. And, and you can imagine the whole thing caused a, 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 a return back to Smollett where people now are outraged at Smollett. They are vexed, at, they're angry because the reality is tonight, innocent people could have been harmed because of what this man did. A lot of people could have been tactical already in a, in a country at that time that was very volatile, uh, 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 society-wise, you can say. It, or it was he was basically stoking uh, the, 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 the flames of that and making it far more worse than it was. And again, I, what, I, what I appreciate about the police department that time, or even till today, it's still happening, the Chicago Police Department have taken Smollett to court. And they've been suing him time after this. They, they, they want to strip this man of everything he has. And I'm saying, you go for it, guys. You do that. And, 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 and it, it's, it's been one big court case back and forth. And what's interesting about it is if you've, if you've been kind of keeping... Um, up to date with it. I have not, I just kind of, but I remember I kind of Google and go into it. And Smollett up to now is still claiming his innocence. He's still saying, I didn't do this. But there's CCTV evidence showing him buying this and doing all these things. And, you know, and it's there, it's right there in black and white. It's very, very clear. And let, let, let me say this, let me say this tonight, amen. I really believe tonight, amen. One of the reasons they have a lot of CCTV because people lie a lot. It's very, very hard to say that's not me when they got you on camera. Very, very hard. And I'm going to throw this out for free. If anybody should be the most honest people in society, should be Christians. Everyone's getting quiet. Oh, Lord. I want to look tonight at number six tonight of what God hates. We're going to read it together from verse 16 to verse 19. We're nearly there. The Bible says there are six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness tonight who speaks lies. Father, tonight I thank you, God, again, that we can gather as your church to hear from you. I'm praying, God, tonight you would speak to precious men and women, God. I pray tonight your word will come as you've said it late tonight, Lord, as, as, a, as a washing agent to wash us and to cleanse us, oh God. We need you, God, because of all this happening in our world today. We need you, God, because all the things, God, we come in contact with. Father, let your word wash us tonight, almighty God. I pray for anyone here who's lost or backslidden, Father, I pray they would turn to you and live and not perish. I thank you for the privilege of being behind this pulpit. And I'm praying tonight, God, you'll use me as your mouth 
peace. Be glorified in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ. And all of God's people said, amen and amen. I want to look first of all tonight uh, at lies and the God of truth. Lies and the God of truth. Now tonight, I want to begin tonight by taking a very brief survey tonight. Very, very brief survey. I want you tonight to lift up your hand. Lift up your hand if you've ever told a lie before. Keep it up. You've ever told a lie before. No, no, it's fine. It's okay. Keep it up. If you've ever told a lie before, keep it. Lift your hand up. Now, if your hand is not lifted up tonight, you're a liar. And I can say that with dominion. I can say it with chest. Because the Bible says in Psalms 116 verse 11, all mankind are liars. Check it out yourself. All of us. Even that child is going to be born one day. I guarantee you very, very soon that child is going to live very, very quickly. Now tonight, the devil is the father of all lies. But what you and I may not know tonight, amen, is what he does. He encourages us to lie because he wants God's anger to be directed towards us. We're told in the book of Acts about Ananias and Sapphira. And the Bible tells us, amen, that they were, they, they were a prominent couple in the church who had sold a piece of land. And, and they, they said they sold it for this much, but it was not. But Peter, Pastor Peter, challenges them. And he tells them, he says these words, how has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? That the enemy tonight, what he does, he encourages us. He, 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 he pushes us forward uh, to lie. And I'm going to say tonight, church, God hates lies uh, and lying in general. Uh, and we have a problem here because tonight it is not always the devil that is pushing us to lie. We simply just lie tonight. I'll say for you, amen. A study found that 60% of people lied at least once during a 10-minute conversation and told an average of two or three lies. The study also found lies told by men and women differ in content, but not in quantity. In other words, we lie the same amount of times, but what we lie about is completely different. For example, women more, were more likely to lie to make the person they were talking to feel good while men lied the most often to make themselves look better. That's so true because women is all about feelings. Men is all about how they looked and how they, they are perceived tonight. It reminds me of a story of a man who saw a sign outside a house that said, talking dog for sale. So what happened? He came to the house. He rang the doorbell. A man opened and says, have you got a talking dog for sale? Yes, it's around the back. You can go and check. So he goes around the back of the house and he sees this dog and he says, can you really talk? And the dog replied and says, yes. And the, and the dog began to tell his story. He goes, uh, the man says, what is your story? And the dog began to tell his story. He says, well, um, I, I discovered my gift of talking when I was pretty young. So I told the CIA, and in no time at all, they had me sitting in rooms with world leaders because nobody figured a dog would be an eavesdropper. The travel really tied me out. So I signed up a job at the airport to do some airport security, undercover security. And now I'm just retired. The guy was really impressed. He goes to the owner. He goes, how much for the dog? He goes, $10. He goes, what? $10? Are you out of your mind? Who in the, this dog is gifted? This dog, do you have a talking dog in your hand? Who in their right mind would give, would sell a dog for $10? The owner replied, well, he's a big liar. He didn't do any of those things. You cannot believe a word he says. Tonight, can anyone believe a word you say? Are you known to be truly an honest person? Or do people have to question your genuineness tonight? Do you have a reputation as a liar? Do people know when you're telling the truth? Do you, do you, do you have a character that you, you say what you mean and you mean what you say? Do you tell the truth? even when it will cost you something. Now, we like to say tonight, amen, that honesty pays off, but oftentimes, honesty costs us tonight. Honesty is something tonight, amen, that is a high premium tonight, but it's also, I believe, something that brings a tremendous reward. Now, here's the truth tonight, church. It is natural to lie. And there is something in our nature that enjoys it. There is something in our nature that both lies and loves lying. I'll say tonight, lying is easy. Telling the truth is another story. 
Tell the truth can be very challenging tonight. It can be very, can be very, very difficult tonight. Uh, and I'll say this that everything God says and does is true because he is the God of truth tonight. Isaiah 65 verse 16 says that he's called the God of truth. Hebrews 6, 18 tells us it is impossible for God to what? Lie. Numbers 23 verse 19 declares God is not a man that he should what? Lie. In Psalms 51 verse 6, David tells us what God delights is. He says God delights in truth in the inward part. I'll say it again tonight, church, because God is truth. We as his people must tell the truth tonight. And I'll say for you, amen. So let's consider the direction of God's hatred. The Bible says God hates a false witness who speaks lies. Now I thought about this tonight. Isn't this, okay, who speaks lies? Isn't, isn't, this, just, isn't this just lies? It, it, isn't, it, isn't it the same thing? Okay, who speaks lies? And who, isn't it just lies? Tonight? Isn't it really the same thing? Solomon has just already told us about a lying tongue. This is number two that God hates. And he's almost like he comes full circle to warn us about someone who deliberately gives a false witness. A false witness in a legal sense is somebody who lies on the oath. A witness takes, you could say an oath, it takes a vow. You know, you go to the court and whatever your religion you may find yourself is, you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God, and you put your hand on a Bible or, or whatever you may say you believe tonight, uh, and here is somebody, amen, they are taking a vow, and they're saying what they are speaking is truth, uh, and to go away from this tonight is to be a false witness. The Ten Commandments are simply ten rules of living, uh, especially amongst ourselves uh, as a community, as fellow men and women tonight, uh, but in the Ninth Commandment, we are told by God uh, that you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. If you know the Bible, the Lord Jesus was condemned by false witnesses. We are told in Mark uh, chapter 14, 20, uh, 55 and 56, and the chief priest uh, and all the council sought for witnesses against Jesus to put him to death uh, and found none. So watch this, uh, for many bore false witnesses against him, uh, but their witness agreed not together. Now, for us to understand what God hates here, it is important we break down this text. The Bible tells us a false, that word false means a lying or a liar. It goes on at the very last word. Again, it talks about speaking lies. That's the very last word. The One of the first, A, false. And the very last word we find is lies. It's basically the same as false or lying. You can say potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Basically the same. Those words are not the issue. Those words are not what get God's riled up. The issue tonight is the opposite word, which is speaks. A false witness who speaks. Let me say this tonight, church. This is much more than simply not telling the truth. Literally tonight, God hates those who breathe out lies. See, the Hebrew word speaks translated or it means to blow with the breath of air to fan to kindle a fire to blow with the breath of air to fan to kindle a fire if you've ever had to start a fire out somewhere maybe a barbecue we used to say brian south africa wherever it is or just to start a fire when you, whatever you use, maybe two stones and some twigs and you begin to knock and you get a little flame going. What you begin to do is put some little twigs and et cetera and so forth or more paper, et cetera and so forth. Then when you, once you get a little flame, a little something, what you do now is you begin to blow. Maybe you get a, a, some a paper and you begin to fan it. And by blowing or by fanning tonight, what you are doing, you are encouraging the fire to grow. You're encouraging to expand, to be far bigger than what it is already. Let me bring it down to what God hears tonight. When God tells about a man, I hate a false witness who speaks lies tonight. Let me bring it word to where we live, where we understand this in 2024. God says, I don't like stirrers. 
when you stir things or you stir people. I remember years ago, this is 30 plus years ago, younger man back then. I remember I've been West London and with a couple of friends and we just kind of did doing nothing. Then we were approached by a, a police officer. I still remember a very nice guy. He came to us and we just kind of standing there and he goes, you guys want to earn some money? I go, what? He's like, kind of what? what, what you know, you know, what, 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 you know, what the police want, you know? And they go, well, we, we, we're doing an ID parade and we need some guys to come and stand there because we've got a, we've got a guy and we just need some guys to kind of stand there. We, we've, you know, we, we, we'll pay you guys some money. But how much? He goes, 10 pounds. We do nothing. We're just there. 10 pounds, 30 plus years ago, even 10 pounds today, give it to me. Hey, by the way, right? And, and you know, hey, why not? So we went there, we went to the police station, we're kind of there, we kind of, we, we kind of standing there, we're waiting, kind of all kind of, you know, that. and suddenly the person who was accused came in. And when I looked at the guy, I knew him. And when he came in, he's kind of, you know, just kind of, you know, just kind of handcuffed and brought him and look, double took a look at me. Oh, goodness, it's so all right. So we kind of stood there, we did that, you know, kind of turn and I went about my business. Now, I saw him a couple of times after that time. I got saved now a few months later. I'm kind of standing again in this main area in, in South Kilburn. I'm there with a couple of guys and so forth. And this guy pulls up who's very well known in the area. The moment he came, people began to run. We were actually in a barbershop. And people began to run. I mean, they're jumping out windows, running. This guy, everybody knows him. Everybody knows this guy. Run. I'm kind of there. I, I know him as well. But I'm not running now. I'm saved. I'm like, I'm not running for you. Bro. So I'm there. And he comes in. And I see him. And I'm like, okay, kind of, I said his name or whatever. And I just carried him doing my thing. Then the guy who in the ID parade walks to the shop. And he looks at me. So he pulled the guy out of the shop. And I'm looking there. And he's kind of pointing, pointing, pointing me. So, like, he kind of, so he kind of, his demeanor changed towards me. So the guy begins to walk towards me now. This is the guy everyone's afraid of. He gets walked towards me now. The guy's behind him like. He walks towards me now. And he goes, this is what I'm here about. It's true. Go what? He goes, are you a former? What? Me? No, 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 no. We talk about. And he pointed to the guy and says, he said he saw you, blah, 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 blah. Is that true? And he really moved to me now. Is that true? So yeah. Now he's waiting for me to die. Go explain yourself. So I said, listen, this happened this time, this one, blah, blah, blah. They came to us. They said, you want to make 10 pounds, whatever. We were doing nothing. And we said, why not? We just did it. And that was it. Go, listen, don't do that. Don't go with the man there. What, you, what money come to me? And he opened his wallet, big old guy, gave him two 50 pound notes. Carry your business. And the guy is vexed now. Because he expected this guy to do something to me. And behind him, he's walking behind him. And what he's doing all that time is stirring. What all the time he's trying to wind him up and, 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 and get him to respond a certain way. One of the ways we stir people up is I wouldn't take that value. Remember that in school? You know, people, all the, the things that happen and we, we begin to say things. Listen to what somebody gave, gave regarding the description of God in the stirrer. It is a person who feels it necessary to try and create more drama in regards to a situation or argument. So there's already drama, but a stirrer wants more drama. He wants more problems. Another person says it is a person who tries to make situations in which people disagree even worse. Church, it is already bad, but a stirrer wants to make it worse. And God says, I hate this. God says, this riles me. This vexes me. And I'm going to give you three reasons why tonight. Number one, I believe that we aid stirring. Number one, when we gossip. Somebody has said these words. A gossip is just a fool with a keen sense of rumor. I like how Proverbs puts it in Proverbs chapter 26, verse 20. It says, for lack of wood, a fire goes out. And where there is no whisperer or gossip, quarreling stops. God is very wise tonight. God knows exactly that when you remove the gossip, when you remove the whispering, when you move the, all of a sudden, everything changes. All of a sudden, you can say, man, the atmosphere is different. A woman called Donna Elder, she's a sociologist. 
And she did her research for three years and she identified an important dynamic involving gossip. And Elder discovered, listen to what she says, the initial negative statement was not the starting point for gossip. She says the critical turning point was found in the response to the initial statement. Let me put what I, what I explain what I mean. When you say, for example, ladies, you know what? So-and-so, she's a snob. That's the way gossip starts. Gossip does not start when somebody makes a statement tonight. It is when somebody else agrees with that statement. That's when gossip begins. That when you co-sign it, when you, when you, when you, when you, do the, when, when, in other words, is when you second it. You know, you're having a meeting and you know what? Uh, I, 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 I move that we'll have a five minute break. And somebody says, yeah, I agree. The moment you agree with the statement, you're gossip. You started a fire. One man puts it this way. Whoever gossips to you, they will gossip about you. The second thing is silence. Ecclesiastes 3.7 says this, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. Church tonight, there have been time things have been said to us that we should have spoken up about, but we kept silent. That we should have said something, but we said nada. And that's all of us. Every single one of us. I wonder tonight if we're going to be honest. And I asked tonight if there's liars. Let me ask another question. I wonder tonight, someone ever said something to you similar to this? You would never guess what so and so said about you. And we usually respond, whoa. Right? That's not what we should say. Because I, I've, I've had times people said things to me. And I wish I'd said something, but I'm growing up. I'm, I'm getting to grow up a little more now. But next time someone says, you know what? You never guess what somebody said about you. Don't say what. Say, what did you say? Why you listen to that? But you know me. What, what did you say? Somebody said these words. If we know our words are needed and yet we withhold them, we're as guilty of bearing false witness as the reviler who began the lie. So the truth is sometimes because of the pull of the moment, instead of speaking up, we can join in. Consider what it says in James 4, 17, powerful text. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him, it's sin. The last one is half-truths. Check, what was the accusation brought against the Lord Jesus? Do you remember? Well, let me remind you. Matthew 26, verse 61. This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. That's true. He did say that. But that's not all he said. In John chapter 2, verse 19 to 21, we get the full story. Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple, and in three days, I will raise it up. 20. Then the Jews said, it has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you will raise it up in three days, verse 21, but he was speaking of the temple of his body. So they were telling the truth, just not the whole truth. Half truth, that people may say things, but is that all they said? What's the context? What's behind it? See, our facts then I better cor be, be correct before we start sharing things about other people. In Deuteronomy chapter 19, we see how seriously God takes this. Deuteronomy 19, 16 to 19 says, if a malicious, I'm reading for the NIV because it gives it more. If a malicious 
witness takes the stand to accuse someone of a crime. The two people involved in the dispute must stand in the presence of the Lord before the priests and the judge who are in the office at that time. The judges must take, make a thorough investigation and if the witness proved to be a liar, giving false testimony against a fellow Israelite, then due to the false witness, as that witness intended to do to the other party, you must purge the evil from amongst you. Whoa. Do to them exactly what they intended to do to the person they were lying against. This doesn't stop there. Verse 20 to verse 21. The rest of the people will hear of this and be afraid and never again will such an evil thing be done amongst you. Show no pity, life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. Could you imagine if we're still living under the law? Think about that. If we're, if we're still, under, thank God we're under grace. Could you imagine if we're still living under the law right now? Because this shows exactly how serious God takes this. You go and bring false testimony to put somebody away, for example, for 25 years. Because you brought a false testimony to put somebody away for 25 years, guess what? You're going to do 25 years. You try and kill somebody, or you've killed somebody, guess what? You're going to be killed. An eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, foot for foot. This is exactly how serious God takes this. What the Bible is simply saying there. Because of this, don't go there. Proverbs 19 verse 5 says, A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who speaks lies will not escape. If you read Exodus chapter 23 at your time, we are told not to even join hands or keep company with a false witness. What the Bible is saying here, if someone we know is a false witness, break fellowship with them. Don't even, don't. That's what the word of God says. Now here's the question tonight. Very simple tonight. Are we, are we a troublemaker or a peacemaker? Do we want to fix things or do we want to make it worse do we want to heal or do we want to hurt see a stirrer tonight does not want to de-escalate things a stirrer wants to escalate things and the bible says stay away from this kind of person they are egging you on instead of calming you down and i have a problem with this kind of person That, do we have a heart that says, you know what? Hey, maybe that's not, maybe I hear what you're saying, but hey, maybe, you know what? Maybe they, you know, have you, and you're trying to work with, hey, maybe they didn't mean it. Or maybe have you looked up for this point of view? Or yeah, okay. Have we tried talking to them and, you know, hey, just forgive them, pray for them, you know? Oh, do you, yeah. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. And they're egging you on. And they're stirring you. And they're pushing you. I believe in that part of leadership is using that influence for good to steer people, not stir them, to steer people in the right direction. Years ago on Folkestone Road, this is uh, the first building the Wolfenstow had. Some of you remember that building. Years ago, Folkestone Road was burgled. And Basel was called and panicking. Oh, the, the church has been burgled. We're burgled. Well, we're all here. All the stuff is done. Uh, and he's thinking, what do I do? The church has been burgled. Everyone's there panicking. All the ushers and people, they're panicking. Everything is gone. Chairs, everything is gone. Gone. So he comes to the building, sees them all panicking. And as soon as he walks in, he looks around and says, you know, praise God, we can now get new equipment because of the insurance. And straight away, the atmosphere changed. Leadership. Can you imagine? This? Oh, yeah, we'll be good. Oh, oh, yeah. 
I like that old song. Always look on the bright side of life. I don't know if we realize this. Life is too short. It really is. Way too short. And I thank God he didn't join in the doom and gloom. But his actions and his words lifted them from the doom and the gloom. Listen, church, we are either spiritual arsonists or spiritual firefighters. And a sign of sonship tonight that you are a son of God is a peacemaker. Matthew 5, 9, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of of God, you don't you don't, you don't know you don't know what they say. You know, well, 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 yeah, well, you say, but well, you don't know that, do you? Have you asked them? No, but you don't you don't know that you don't you don't you, don't, you really don't know that, do you? Have you tried forgiving? Ah, have you tried? Have you gone? Have you, have you went to go and speak to them? Maybe it's not as bad as you think it is. Sit down, have a man to man, a woman to woman, Christian to Christian. Never do it like this because we haven't done it for did we we've completely forgotten about this. This is this, one time we began to mock this, but it is so powerful. It, 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 here it is. You're vexed. What would Jesus do? How many Christians do we have here? You say we follow Jesus. What would the Son of God who died for us do in that situation? So let's look tonight and close at one another. Why does God hate a false witness who speaks lies? God hates a false witness who speaks lies because they are opposed to the truth. And to be opposed to the truth is a direct attack against God because he is the truth. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the what? Truth. We see how highly God values truth in Zechariah 8, 16 to 17. It says, there are the things, sorry, these are the things that you shall do. Speak the truth to one another. Render in your gates judgments that are true. Now watch what he says, and make for peace. Do not devise evil in your hearts against one another. L and and to, uh, or, or one another and to and and love no false oaths for all these things i hate declares the lord that the decisions and choices we make tonight are to be made for peace that is the end game that is the goal that should be our hearts peace that i want peace with my brethren I want peace with my brothers and sisters tonight. As a pastor, you may have to put some people out of church sometimes. But know tonight, the end game is always peace. That you want to bring that individual where they are away from God. Now they are in enmity with God. Now they're in enmity with God because of the decision or actions. Now they come back when you put them out because now they begin to weigh uh, the, the, the consequences and the decisions they're making tonight. Is you call them to bring them to a place of sorrow of I want to return. Well, okay, you want to return, do your time, repent, and return back to a peaceful relationship with God and a peaceful relationship with your brethren. So the heart of church discipline it's not a discipline, it's reconciliation. It's peace. Anyone that enjoys that is a cycle. Because my God doesn't tonight. If you read Zech if you read the book of um, I believe it's uh 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 come to one of the, one of the major prophets, not Isaiah, uh, Ezekiel, that God tells uh, the prophet Ezekiel to go and warn the wicked, because I don't want the wicked to perish. Now think about it tonight. In our world tonight, if I'm honest, in our world, there's very, 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 very few wicked people. Very few in our world, but they're there. Wicked people. Wicked. Very few wicked people in this world of 8 billion people. Those few wicked people, God does not want them to perish. That's the heart of God.
tonight, church, God cares about how we treat each other and what we testify or say about each other. He knows when we engage or if we engage in this sin that it's going to destroy the unity that should be amongst us. And we must be careful in our conduct with each other not to be a direct or indirect false witness because God is looking at what we say, how we say, and why we say it tonight. And it's so important we strive to please him. We strive to honor him. We strive to be the people of God. He's called and created us and sent his son to die for. That ought to be our hearts tonight. And I believe we strive in our interactions with each other, lifting each other up, valuing each other with our words, our thoughts about each other. And I believe if we do this tonight, church, if we do this tonight, we are going to be blessed. God is going to be glorified. The kingdom is going to be advanced. And the devil is going to continue to be a stinking, nothing liar. And heaven rejoices. That's my heart. And I believe that's Jesus' heart. Just bow our heads and close our eyes tonight. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. Very quickly, maybe you're here tonight, you know, right with God. Maybe tonight, here's your time, you'll stir. But I'm believing the Holy Spirit is stirring you to be saved. He's stirring your heart to see that sin will bring you to a devil's hell. But repentance opens the floodgates of heaven for your life. You're here tonight, you're not saved, you're, you're backslid, whatever it may be, you need Jesus. If that's you tonight, would you be honest with the Spirit of God as he's evidently here tonight? Just lift your hand up. Say, it's my hand, Jesus. I want to get my heart right with you. I need you to save me. I need to forgive me. I'm away from you tonight. Save me. And he will. Because he's such a good God. Tonight, anyone here in this place, unsaved, backslider, here's my hand, Jesus. Forgive me. Save me. Amen. I want to speak to God's people tonight why do we bear false witness I believe we bear false witness sometimes because tit for tat somebody said something to us or about us and we're going to do the same back tit for tat it can be also because of jealousy, envy, insecurity, selfish gain, or we're simply just caught up in the crowd and we feel we have to join in. We feel we have to give our own toothpence instead of being a peacemaker squashing that thing dead right there because that's what Jesus would do that's what the son of God would do the Bible says if, if God numbered our transgressions we would stand I thank God there's no list about me anymore but yet we keep listing our minds and our hearts towards each other It is the truth tonight. And I'm talking about truth speaking and truth telling that sets us free. And none of us tonight will claim the name of Christ. We cannot grow into the likeness of Christ if we continue to speak it on Christ like ways. As people who want to be more like Him, it is important we speak differently to each other I want to be more like him 
that's what it means to grow that's what it means to be a child of God you want any any parent you want your child to be like you let's not be stirrers tonight let's not be troublemakers tonight God hates those kind of people Let's always try to be peacemakers. Stir people away from rage. Stir people away from lies. Stir people away from emotion. Stir people away from doom and gloom. Tonight, the Spirit of God is here. And I believe if we come to this altar, not religiously, but honestly, and bring our hearts before God, every single one of us can leave different tonight. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I live is now lived for the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Do we believe that tonight? Is that our prayer? Is that our heart? I want to open the altar. Let's all rise up to our feet tonight. It's up to you what you decide to do, but I want to encourage you to come to the altar tonight. There's power here. There's power here when we come and just say, God, forgive me. God, cleanse me. Take the call. Cleanse my lips. God, I'm sorry. God help me. God, I'm not playing games tonight. I'm, I, 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 I've fallen short. Will you help me? God, in a moment in time, will forgive. In a moment in time, will change. In a moment in time, will heal. In a moment in time, will turn things around. Life is too short. People are going to eternity. When I go, I want to go right. When I go, I want to go with less to explain myself to Jesus about. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. Because our God is a peacemaker. One of his titles is the Prince of Peace. And that ought to be our posture, our heart. And anybody who's stirring you towards drama. I'm not trying to talk you down and point you in the right direction and help you and bless you and say, hey, maybe it's not what you think. People that you stay away from people like that. to the people of God God you will go to work in the hearts of men God you go to work in the hearts of your people Father we need you tonight Father we have fallen short of your glory God we need you tonight help us God 